This is Corey Lamley with Life in the Grid. In this 10 minute video, we're going to be showing how to connect and create a cPanel database. In order to bring this video into full context for those who are not following along on a screen similar to this, or maybe joining from a web feed such as YouTube, uh, what we have done so far leading up to this screen is create a package and installer file using the duplicator plugin from our WordPress administrator. Uh, we've copied both the installer and package file to a new server or new location that we want to redeploy our packaged WordPress site on. Then, using a web browser, we browse to the installer.php file where we are now looking at redeploying our WordPress package. Now, if you'd like to get more resources for what I just described, check out the link in the upper right hand corner of this video and it'll go into way more detail for duplicating your own WordPress site and all the ins and outs of getting started with the plugin. Now, if you're hosting a WordPress site on your own computer for development purposes, then checking the database creation option should create a new database on most setups if it doesn't already exist. However, on almost all shared hosting systems, this particular feature does not work, which means you'll manually need to create the database. Once the database is set up, we'll need to create the necessary user credentials to connect to the database. We'll go through all of this in detail shortly using a cPanel branded setup. Now, if your hosting provider does not have a branded cPanel style interface, then you'll need to check with their help documentation on how to create the database and user credentials on their specific hosting interfaces. If you'd like to follow along in this tutorial with your own cPanel interface and work in an approved duplicator hosting environment, check out the approved hosting link page, which can be found by clicking on the approved hosting link from the installer page. Now, on this page, we have a list of hosting providers that we currently use and have had extremely good success with when using the duplicator. After helping thousands of people on hundreds of different environments, one thing that we have found is that not all hosting providers are the same, and getting your site set up on a good host can be the difference between a smooth install and an install process that won't even work at all. Now, we do receive a small commission when you use any of these links, and we greatly appreciate your contribution. These links are what help us to continue to develop this free plugin and provide free support. Most importantly, we know that these hosting environments have worked extremely well for us and should work extremely well for you. In fact, most of the help tickets that we get are from other hosting providers. They either lock down or limit functionality to their end users, leaving them unable to perform simple tasks. So please keep these links in mind if you sign up now or in the future. With that said, let's go ahead and get your cPanel database configured. All right, so here we are on the duplicator installer and we need to connect to a MySQL server. Now we have one of two options here. The first option is that our database already exists and we know the username and the credentials to connect to that database. If we know those, let's go ahead and enter in the username, the password in the database here, and then click on the test connection button. This will open up a dialogue showing us whether the test um, of that connection was successful or not. If it was successful, you'll see it in green. Um, there is another option here called table removal and this is kind of more of an advanced feature. If you want to use that, you can actually connect to a database and have it clean out the database that already exists. However, I do um, caution you to use um, this option only if you know what you're doing. If you're, if you're not quite sure what this is or using this for the first time, then you need to make sure and read the documentation thoroughly. Be sure you always have backups of all your databases before you continue and use that option. Now the second option that we had here is that we don't have a database at all and we need to connect to that database. So in order to do that we need to jump out to a cPanel interface and the examples that I'm going to use here are a host monster cPanel and another cPanel that I have set up on a dedicated server. So let's jump out to the host monster cPanel first and we can get to that by clicking on um, the cPanel link in the upper left hand corner. Now when you come to the cPanel interface you're going to see quite a few options and if you scroll down a little bit and look for the find box this will help filter down the information and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and type the word data short for database and this will filter down the interface and find the information that we need um, specifically for setting up the databases and you'll see here there's a option called MySQL databases this is what we're going to want to click on and, and continue to go through. Now, in order to make the demonstration a little bit cleaner, I have another cPanel set up that has um, a completely blank interface, and I'm going to go ahead and use that 
uh, cPanel interface to make things a little bit smoother for the demonstration. So I'm going to jump over here to another cPanel. Now this cPanel looks very similar. We're going to go ahead and find the find box again, type in the word data, and as you can see, um, it filters down the same way. And as you can recall earlier, there were a couple other options. Now most cPanels are going to be very similar. They're going to have um, most of the same options. Uh, you're going to see some features in one that you might not see in another. Um, as I said earlier, um, we're going to go ahead and click on the MySQL databases. So let's get started by clicking on this link here. Now what this does is this takes us to an interface that allows us to create the database and the user and associate that user to the database. So let's go ahead and create our database first. I'm going to give us um, a database name called the demo and I'm going to create that database. I'm going to go back here. As you can see the database has been created. Um, the size is zero. There's no users associated with that database. Um, you may have also noticed that there's this prefix assigned to this. Now what this is, is this is a prefix that is assigned on most shared hosting systems. And what this does is this allows um, hosts to create uh, multiple databases on the same servers. And typically this is usually the username of your account. However, you will want to remember this whole string here. In fact, you can copy it into your paste buffer um, because we'll be using it later on. And that is the full name of your database. Now we also need to create a user um, for that database. So we're going to come down here to the MySQL users and I'm going to create a user called admin. I'm going to give it a password of test one. Obviously you're going to want to give it a much more secure test um, password. I'm going to go ahead and create this user. I'm going to go back. As you can see now I have a user that I created called grid apps admin and there is also um, a section here called add user to database. Now we have to associate this um, user to the database and we can easily do that by clicking on the add button here. And this will take us to an interface. We're going to want to go ahead and add all privileges for this user to that database. Click the make changes button. We're going to go back and now we can see that this database grid apps demo is now associated with this user grid apps admin. And this is what gives us the necessary credentials to connect to the database. So now we can go ahead and jump back to our installer. We're going to go ahead and click in the user dialog and, we're, and our username was grid apps admin. We're going to go ahead and put in the password that we had and we're going to go ahead and put in the database name that we had. We're going to go ahead and click the test connection button and you can see that now we have a successful connection. And now we're ready to continue um, with the process of connecting um, the duplicator to our database and uh, finishing the rest of the installation process. So this is going to wrap up our tutorial on setting up a cPanel database. Don't forget to check out the approved hosting link found below. You can also help us by going to your WordPress administrator and under the duplicator section there's a couple links here there's the support link in here we also have the exact same link to our approved um, affiliate hosting program um, you can click on any of these links and clicking through on these links do help us because um, we do get that small commission and you can also get access to everything in our knowledge base um, a lot of uh, helpful guides and FAQ pages that will help you walk through using the duplicator step by step um, if you'd like to spread the word, you can easily do that by clicking on, on the All About section. There's a section down here for Spread the Word. Um, you can share, tweet, and uh, send this to any of the social engines. Um, you can also give us a five-star review on the WordPress directory. Or if you'd like to just make a small donation, every little bit helps for us. Um, we also have a section here called Give Us Your Opinion. And, and this is just a quick poll that helps us to identify things that we can add to the plugin to make it better, to um, give you more support and functionality uh, when you're actually using the duplicator. So with that said, we appreciate your help. Um, I think together we can make this an awesome plugin with your feedback and your support. And um, just have a fantastic day. Take care.